DeepSeek has landed and it's making waves across the global AI landscape. The buzz around it is huge, and for good reason. This thing is not just free and cost effective, but you can actually run it right on your own machine. I'm going to walk you through installing it locally on your computer, then we'll put these models through their paces to test their reasoning capabilities. To get started, you'll need a platform that can handle these advanced AI models, and LM Studio is perfect for this. It's a lightweight piece of software that's specifically designed to run these sophisticated AI models on your local machine without any fuss. While you could go with Misty as an alternative, which offers both local and online AI models along with some nice features like split chats and real-time data retrieval, Personally, I prefer LM Studio. That's why I've chosen LM Studio for this demonstration of setting up and testing DeepSeek R1. Getting started is super simple. Just head over to lmstudio.ai, select the version that matches your operating system, and download it. The installation process is completely straightforward. Just follow the basic setup steps, and before you know it, you're in the application. It's really that easy. Now, let me show you around the interface. The UI is divided into four main sections. First, there's the chat section. This is where you'll be having conversations with your AI models. Then there's the developer section, which houses all the advanced features. Next up is my models section. Think of this as your AI library where all your downloaded models are stored and organized. Finally, there's the discovery tab, which is essentially your AI model marketplace. The layout is clean and intuitive. Let's dive into exploring what DeepSeek models are available. When we search for DeepSeek, in the discovery tab, you'll see the results populate below. Notice those purple emojis next to some models? Those are LM Studio staff picks. These are the models they specifically recommend for their quality, performance, and how well they work with the platform. Below those, you'll see all the other available models that are hosted on huggingface.co, which is basically the go-to platform for sharing AI models, datasets, tools, and hosting applications. While it shows 503 models in total, we're focusing on the newest ones that were uploaded just recently. Here's where you need to make an important decision. You'll notice models labeled as one 5B, 7, 8, all the way up to 32B. These numbers are crucial. They represent the model's parameters, which determine how complex and capable the model is. Generally speaking, more parameters mean better reasoning and text generation capabilities. These are actually distilled versions of the main DeepSeek R1 model. Think of them as smaller, optimized versions that have been trained from the original. And that model without a parameter count listed, that's the full version, packing around 670B parameters. There's another small but interesting distinction here between the Quen and Alama models. Quen is Alibaba's AI model, while Alama comes from Meta, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's company. Most of what you're seeing here are Quen models, except for that 8B model. That's the only Llama one in the bunch. While they differ in their architecture, training data, and have some subtle performance variations. For most everyday users, you'll barely notice a difference in how they perform. Think of it like different car engines that get you to the same destination. The technical details under the hood might be different, but the driving experience feels pretty much the same. Now that we understand what parameters mean, let's figure out which model to choose. We need to break this down and go through them one by one. Each model comes with four quantization states, Q3, Q4, Q6, and Q8. Here's the deal with quantization. The lower the number, the smaller and faster the model runs, but you'll lose some accuracy. On the flip side, higher numbers like Q6 and Q8 keep more precision, but need more computing power to run. Let's look at this 1.5B model as an example. It comes with all four quantization states, and each one serves a different purpose depending on whether you want speed, efficiency, or precision for different tasks. The Q3 version comes in at under one gigabyte. It's the smallest, fastest option, but you'll get the lowest precision. Moving up to Q4 at 1.1 gigabytes gives you a nice balance between efficiency and quality. The Q6 version hits 1.4 gigabytes and offers better accuracy, but it's going to need more resources. Finally, the Q8 version at 1.8 gigabytes gives you the closest to full precision, but it's also the most demanding on your computer. So here's how you choose. If you're looking to do lightweight stuff like basic text generation, chatbot responses, or casual inference, go with the 1.5B model and pick the quantization level that matches what your system can handle. But if you're planning on tackling more complex tasks like reasoning, coding, or advanced problem solving, you'll want to look at the bigger models with higher parameter counts. Speaking of big models, look at this big boy. This is the complete DeepSeek R1 model. Just like the others, it comes with those same quantization levels, each designed for different purposes where you're trading off size, speed, and precision. But make no mistake, this is a massive model that you typically see in enterprise environments, AI research labs, or large-scale deployments. You can't just run this on any computer. It needs serious hardware like multi-GPU setups or cloud-based AI clusters to run effectively. Think of it as the difference between a regular car and a Formula One race car. They both get you where you're going, but they have very different requirements and capabilities. For home use, you're probably going to be better off with a smaller model. The 1.5B model is perfect if you're looking to do lightweight tasks like running chatbots, text completion, or basic automation. If you need something more substantial, the 8B model handles general purpose AI tasks really well. Things like reasoning, 
summarization, and code assistance. Moving up to the 14B model, you get stronger reasoning and creativity, which makes it great for more advanced problem solving and AI-assisted work. The 32B model is where you get into deeper reasoning and complex tasks that you'd use for AI research, but keep in mind you'll need a high-end PC for this one. To run the 32B model smoothly, you're looking at needing at least 24 gigabytes of VRAM and a powerful PC setup. So which model should you pick? It really comes down to two things, what you want to use it for and what your PC can handle. Let me break down the hardware requirements for each model. For the 1.5B model, you just need eight gigabytes of RAM and you don't even need a dedicated GPU. Your CPU can handle it, though any GPU with four gigabytes or more VRAM will work fine. This is your go-to for chatbots and simple tasks. The 8B model needs a bit more. You'll want at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and a GPU with eight gigabytes or more VRAM but it'll handle general AI tasks like summarization and reasoning nicely. For the 14B model, you're looking at 32 gigabytes of RAM and a GPU with 12 gigabytes or more VRAM. It can tackle advanced reasoning, though you might notice the responses come a bit slower. And finally, the 32B model needs some serious hardware, at least 48 gigabytes of RAM and a GPU with 24 gigabytes or more VRAM. That's the kind of setup you'd need for complex AI workloads and research level tasks. Basically, it's like picking a computer based on whether you need it for web browsing or professional video editing, you want to match the tool to both your needs and your hardware capabilities. Now let's switch to a bit more interesting part, testing out the reasoning capabilities of these R1 models. Since my machine is decent, but not exactly top of the line, I'll skip the really heavy models. Instead, I'm going to download all the quantizations for the 1.5, 8, and 14B models to test them out. I probably didn't need to grab every single quantization since the results will be pretty similar, but I want to be thorough with the testing. Let's kick things off with the 1.5B Q3 model. Once you pick and load a model, you'll notice there are some custom settings you can play with. These settings are pretty important to understand. Context length determines how much text the model can handle in one go during your conversation. GPU offload controls how much of the processing gets pushed to your graphics card instead of your CPU. This can really help with performance. The CPU thread pool size lets you decide how many CPU threads the model gets to use, which affects both speed and efficiency. Evaluation batch size is interesting. It controls how many tokens get processed at once, which impacts how responsive the model is and how much memory it uses. There are also some more advanced options for fine tuning, like rope scaling, flash attention, and quantization settings. Think of these settings like the control panel of a sophisticated machine. Each knob and switch affects how smoothly it runs. All right, time to put these models through their paces with a trick question. If you leave a cup of coffee outside in winter, what will happen to it in three hours? The ideal answer should recognize that it depends on the temperature. Below freezing means you get frozen coffee, Above freezing means you just get cold coffee. And look at it go, thinking like a little champ. And here's what it came up with. A cup of coffee left outside in winter will remain warm for a longer duration compared to its corresponding tea due to similar specific heat capacities and Newton's law of cooling, though the time difference may be minimal due to well-insulated conditions. Well, that's interesting. It's gone full physics professor on us, talking about heat retention and scientific principles, but completely missed the basic point about freezing temperatures. Let's start fresh with a new session and load up the 1.5 BQ4 model. This one comes back with, three hours outside in winter will result in a warm looking, somewhat aged coffee cup with noticeable texture changes and possibly color alterations. Interesting, this one's completely fixated on how the cup looks rather than what's actually happening to the coffee inside it. Moving on to the 1.5 BQ6 model, here's what it thinks. In a cold and dry environment like winter outside, a cup of coffee will naturally lose heat over time through natural cooling mechanisms. While without proper insulation or external heating, the coffee may not retain as much heat compared to something with better insulating properties. However, within three hours, it is unlikely to cool significantly due to limited insulation effects. Once again, we're seeing too much focus on heat retention and insulation, completely missing the elephant in the room. And the 1.5 BQ8 model gives us, after three hours of leaving the cup outside during winter, the coffee will cool down from its initial temperature, likely reaching around minus 10 degrees. At least this one's thinking about temperature, but it doesn't quite connect the dots that at minus 10 degrees, we're not just talking about cooling anymore, we're talking about frozen coffee. All right, I've decided to skip testing the lower quantizations at this point. I've tested them and the answers are pretty much the same. I will not make you sit through all of that. Let's jump to the 8BQ8 model. This one says the coffee will likely freeze within three hours, potentially leading to spillage or breakage depending on the cup's material and environmental conditions. Getting closer to the truth, but it's got the cause and effect backward. Freezing itself wouldn't cause spillage or breakage. The 14BQ8 model gives us, in cold conditions, especially below freezing, 
The coffee will partially freeze with a slushy top after three hours. In milder winter conditions, it will chill significantly without freezing. The exact outcome depends on temperature, wind, precipitation, and cup insulation. Somewhat accurate, it acknowledges that freezing depends on temperature and environmental factors, though it's overcomplicating things with that slushy top business instead of just saying it'll freeze solid below freezing. Now I need to test it on other web AIs. Let's ask GPT-01 the same question. It thinks that in most typical winter scenarios where outdoor temperatures are well below freezing, you can expect the coffee to be frozen, at least partially, after three hours, which is correct. Claude Sonnet 3.5, even though it's not specifically a reasoning model, gives us, in most winter conditions after three hours, your coffee would either be unpleasantly cold or frozen solid, depending on the specific temperature outside. Not bad at all. Now let's check the complete deep seek. It thinks, result after three hours, the coffee will be undrinkably cold. In sub-freezing conditions, it may develop ice crystals or freeze solid, which is also correct. So here's what we've learned. If you want to use deep seek locally, you're looking at some trade-offs unless you've got the hardware to run the full model. But don't let that discourage you. For tasks like text generation, chatbots, or basic reasoning, the smaller models are fantastic and actually more practical for most users. If you haven't given it a try yet, now's the perfect time to explore and figure out which version works best for you. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.